This video will explain how to configure input-output devices and set up access points for a CAP XLV2 in MyQ community. We'll explore two scenarios, a simple setup that uses basic configuration and a more sophisticated installation where advanced configuration gives you maximum control. The configurations shown in this video are examples. Please configure your devices according to the requirements of your site. Let's start by understanding the different relay configurations in a CAP XLV2. The CAP XLV2 has two door boards. Each features two Wiegand connectors. Each Wiegand connection has two corresponding relays, one primary relay and one auxiliary relay. This makes for a total of four Wiegand connectors with eight corresponding relays. In basic configuration mode, only the four primary relays are active. This means you can control a maximum of four devices. Wiegand Connector 1 controls Relay 1. Wiegand Connector 2 controls Relay 3. Wiegand 3 controls Relay 5. And Wiegand 4 controls Relay 7. When Advanced Configuration Mode is activated, the four auxiliary relays become available. This makes it possible for each of the four Wiegand devices to be mapped to any one of the eight available relays. In addition, the CAP XLV2 features an OSDP connector. This connector allows up to four OSDP devices to be connected in a daisy chain to the one connector on the main board of the CAP XLV2. With the addition of the OSDP port, you are now able to map eight different input devices to any of eight relay-driven devices. Let's discuss use cases for basic and advanced configurations. Let's dig in and look at our first use case where we'll set up a basic configuration. This community has a CAP XLV2 at the main entrance, a mail room with a smart reader, and a fitness center with a second smart reader. Set up your devices in MyQ Community. Log in to your MyQ Community account and go to the Devices tab. Click Add Device. Select the CAP XLV2 intercom. Choose the number of devices and access points, then click Next. In the Configure Devices box, find your device and click Start. Enter the controller number and give it a name. Refer to the diagram to find the controller number for your device. With basic configuration, you'll add up to four access points, name them, and choose whether to enable audio-video. Click Save and Next. Update the admin code from the default and click Done. Your CAP XLV2 is now active in your MyQ community account. For more details on setting up your community, refer to the MyQ Community Portal Overview video. Let's look at our second use case, where we'll use advanced configuration. This high-rise apartment building has a CAP XLV2 at the main entrance and an elevator that services six floors. The elevator has an OSDP reader. This advanced access control system ensures that a resident is only able to access the floor their apartment is on. For this setup, First, let us go through the hardware installation of the OSDP reader. Instead of separate individual OSDP connectors for multiple devices, there is one connector that allows connection of four devices in a daisy chain. Note, the CAP XLV2 can only detect one OSDP device at a time. We recommend leaving the 12-volt wire unconnected for all OSDP devices in the chain, except for the one that is to be detected. When you're ready to begin detecting your readers, start with the device nearest to the CAP XLV2. Let's wire the OSDP device. Start with the power off in the CAP XLV2. Your wiring will consist of ground, data plus, data minus, and 12 volt power into a four wire connector box. Add matching 100 ohms resistors on the connection between the D plus and D minus on the OSDP terminal and on the last device in the daisy chain. 
plug the wired terminal into the OSDP port on the main board. Restore power to the CAP XLV2. Now, the OSDP device needs to be added to the CAP XLV2. Until it is added to the controller, it will not be visible for configuration in MyQ community. On the top right of the screen, tap the three dots to enter admin mode on the CAP XLV2. Enter your code. On the left, tap System. Tap OSDP. On your first setup, you'll see no connected reader. Toggle the Begin Installation button on. The CAP XLV2 will search for connected readers. Once the reader is detected, it will show on the screen and the light on the reader will turn amber. Toggle the Begin Installation button off. The connected reader will now show details of its status, firmware version, if it needs an update, and the device serial number. For installations where more than one reader is connected, you can tap the screen to scroll between the readers. Once the reader is connected, follow the same steps for the remaining readers. Remember to connect the power wire for each reader one at a time as you go. It's time to configure your devices on MyQ Community web platform. We will need to set up device configurations, access zones, and resident groups. Add the CAP XLV2 device to MyQ Community. Choose Advanced Configuration. Under Advanced Settings, select Door Settings. Choose Door 1. Click the drop-down menu in general. Change the access point name to Main Entry. Leave the default settings for the rest of the parameters. Open the Relay Outputs drop-down menu. Change the name to Main Entry. Select Relay 7 as the Relay Output. Open the Reader's drop-down menu. We are assuming the OSDP reader is used as the primary reader, so select OSDP 1. In order to enable mobile credentialing capability for the reader in the main entry, toggle the button for Mobile Credentials Enabled. For more mobile credentialing options, go to Reader Settings under the Advanced Settings for this device. Click Save to save the configuration for Access 1. Select Door 2 and start Guided Setup. In the General menu, change the access point name to Floor 2. Leave the default settings for the rest of the parameters. Change the name to Floor 2. Select Relay 2 as the relay output. In the Reader menu, select the Wiegand 1 reader as the primary reader and enable the mobile credentials. While enabling the Wiegand reader, you will see that unlike OSDP readers, which can automatically obtain the serial number of the reader, Wiegand readers need to enter the serial number to make the mobile credential work. We will review the necessary steps to enable this shortly. Click the Save button to save the configuration for Access 2. Repeat these steps for access points 3 through 8. Note the access point name and change the relay name according to the floor number. Click Reader Settings under Advanced Settings to see the details about Wiegand readers and OSDP readers. Here, you can see which access points the Wiegand reader is associated with. You can also change the name to Elevator Reader. This is also where you enter the serial number to use mobile credential. For the OSDP reader, you can see its serial number, status, firmware version, channel type, and the access point that it is associated with. You can also change the name. This is where you can change or modify the different modes of mobile credentials. Tap, touch, and alert.
Click Save to save your changes. Click Configuration Summary to view configured access points. We will also need to set up the access zones to restrict access to the resident groups. For detailed instructions on setting up the zones, please refer to the overview video. For this use case, we have created individual zones for the main entry and each floor separately. Add the required residents to each access zone using the Groups tab. For detailed instructions, please refer to the MyQ Community Overview video. For more resources on the CAP XLV2 and to learn more about how to get the most from LiftMaster powered by MyQ, visit support.partner.liftmaster.com.